What's going on, Bully fam? It's your boy, the educator, the scientist, Mr. Double Muscle Line Bulls, bringing you another episode of Breeders Hacks. So on this episode, um, it was something that was kind of bothering me, you know, based off of a few recent stories that people have given me about their experiences at the vet, you know, as well as my own experiences. This episode is gonna be about picking the right vet, choosing the right vet. So the thing is when, and, and, and this is actually very important, you know, when choosing the right vet. And, and the reason why is because, I mean, you're trusting your dog's lives and in, in potentially your dog's lives in these people's hands. So obviously you want to be going with and, and, and for those that are breeders as well, you know, you're 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 entrusting your investment. You're entrusting your program with these people, in my opinion. And, and I think a lot of people would agree with me. These dogs are family. So I'm not going to trust, you know, potentially their lives or or anything that concerns them with just anybody. It's super important when choosing a, a, a vet, you know, especially for your program, because I mean, they're going to be working with you side by side, you know, for the well-being of your, you know, your dogs, you know, for your program. So this is something definitely, definitely, definitely not to take lightly, you know, because it comes down to vets have different motives. You know what I'm saying? They're in it. You know, you have certain vets that are in it for different reasons. You know what I'm saying? And it shows within their work, their practice and, and what they'll recommend to you, you know? So the thing is with, with, with vets and I've come across many and I have, and another thing as a breeder, and this is like something to take note of is you want to kind of have multiple vets that you can contact you know, just in case, say, one is closed, one is closed, you know, for the weekend. You have one that you could go during the weekends, you know, uh, for just different things. Like, you know, like for me, I have one vet that I strictly go to just for, you know, my C-sections. And to be honest, like, I have, I don't even know how many vets numbers in my phone. I got a good, I got, I got a good chunk. But just with that being said, like, and they're not even all in my state. Like I got vets in, uh, we're in New York. I got vets, you know, I got plenty of vets in New York. I got a vet in Connecticut. I got a vet in Maryland. I got a vet, like a couple a couple pet vets in like New Jersey and PA. And that's all within the tri-state area. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, for me at least, you know, if, if you're gonna take this breeding thing seriously, you gotta be willing to travel. That's the key thing. So for me, I'll travel to any of those vets depending on the circumstance, you know? For example, I'll give you an example. Say, um, uh, freezing semen, right? So there is no vets that do frozen semen collection in, that I'm aware of, like even in my state. So there's a vet though in Connecticut that does. So rather than, you know, not offering that service to my clients or rather than not you know storing uh, uh, semen frozen from one of my studs you know rather than not doing it i'm gonna travel because yet again and that's what you do when you're you know uh, a serious breeder you know what i'm saying that the travel doesn't you know the travel does not stop you all that kind of stuff so you want to have different vets because they're going to be able to no one vet at least that I've come across has been able to offer literally like everything that I need. So I have different vets for different, you know, necessities and different things that I need, you know, for my dogs program, things like that. So that's the first thing, but it takes time and you have to feel out different vet vets and you'll get a feeling for, you know, what their motives are, how cool they'll be with you. You know, I have vets that they, they've given me their cell phone numbers and I can contact them in the middle of the night. You know what I'm saying? But uh, we've had to build that a relationship. But so that's 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 one thing. But another thing when choosing a vet is just a simple fact is like you also have vets that are against, you know, uh, breeding, you know, um, you being the responsible breeder that you are, you're coming to them and you're trying to do the right thing for whatever the case it may be. You know, you want to get whatever it is for your dog. That's why you came to the vet. That's why you went to a professional. And the first thing they may want to do is spay or neuter the dog. 
you know, not knowing that you're, you know, a responsible breeder or whatever the case may be. And that's just their motives. You know, they want to help dogs, but they want to, you know, they, they, they don't, they're not in a fan of breeding, you know, as a breeder, those are generally vets you want to kind of stay away from, you know, I mean, the, the problem with those vets is, is they, they become rather difficult to work with, you know, um, and their resort is always going to kind of be like, they want to spay or neuter the dog, you know, when there's other alternative methods that if you're not educated enough about, um, you'll go along and then wind up spaying, neutering the dog, realizing that that was a resort that you didn't have to, you know, that was a method that you didn't have to take, you know? So that's what I mean by like the whole motive aspect, because now there's other vets that are out there that they lean more towards, they're in favor of reproduction. They like dealing with breeders to breed dogs responsibly, you know, and, and, and those are the kind of vets that you want on your side. So the little gem, the little note you want to take when looking and searching for and, and picking a vet is asking, you know, do they offer any reproduction services? Because if they offer reproduction services, that means that they offer, say, for example, artificial inseminations, you know, um, they offer progesterone testing, which is all good stuff to kind of have in mind anyway, because if you don't have a progesterone machine and all that stuff, you know, you'll have to find a vet that does that, you know, anyway. But like I said, that's one of the key things. If they offer Repro reproductive services, then you know that vet is going to be more on your side and have more of an understanding, you know, and as well as offer the services that you're going to need. Here's what I will say, right? There are vets that are against breeding, but are still great vets to have in your back pocket. And I'm going to explain why. Like, I have a vet that isn't for breeding, but they always take care of me when I need certain, you know, antibiotics for my dogs and things like that, you know, other than uh, the antibiotics that we have on breedershacks.com, you know, um, and they go ahead and take care of me and they give me what I need and me and the vet are very cool and have a good relationship. So like I said, you know, it takes time to also build relationships with these vets, but also make them feel like they gotta earn your business. You know what I'm saying? With any vet, make sure, make them feel like they gotta earn your business. And you know, I have, you know, X amount of dogs, you know, I, I would like to bring them all here, you know, as well as, you know, I'm a breeder. I'll have all my clients come to you as well, you know, and the vet's eyes will light up when you tell them that. So the other thing too, is I have a criteria, right? So with this criteria, if the vet doesn't fit that criteria, they don't get my business. And you gotta remember, you're a breeder, you know? Or even, even, even if you have one dog, even if you have one dog, you know, you're a customer at the end of the day. And the vet should be, you know, trying to go out of their way to accommodate you and earn your business at the end of the day. So, you know, you go ahead and, and, and build that relationship and then, you know, you could tell them, say, hey, you know, would it be possible to get your direct contact information, your cell phone, whatever the case may be, so that then, you know, if I have an emergency and like I said, over time, they'll treat you like their VIP client, you know, but it takes time to get there, you know, but like I said, not every vet will be cool like that and it takes time weeding out which vets is going to be ideal and work with you. You know what I'm saying? So it takes time. And like I said, not every vet's gonna work out. Take the time and even get reviews, even get reviews from other people, you know what I'm saying? But take the time and really do your research in finding the vet that works for you. I rather travel, you know, uh, 45 minutes an hour to a great vet than to settle for the local vet that is against breeding you know, wants to overcharge on everything. And that's another thing too, you know, compare prices, like call up other vets and see what their pricing is. Because even though it might be a little bit of a drive, you might still, you might be saving hundreds of dollars. So then you gotta say, is it worth it? You know, we don't have a lot of reproductive vets around us. So within the 45 minute drive, there's only one vet close by. Like, yeah, 45 minute an hour drive, there's only like one vet close by. So that vet knows this. 
So they kind of take advantage and overcharge on a lot of their reproductive services. They overcharge because they know they're the only game in town. So, and just see as well, you know, after going, try out different vets. Like after going to a vet, you know, two or three times, you know, uh, uh, I want to say like a cool vet is going to show themselves. You know what I'm saying? Because like, for example, I had a vet that I had to go, I had to pick up antibiotics and um, what ended up happening was uh, the vet told me I had to come back in for another checkup and charge me for the checkup before I could get the rest of the antibiotics that was owed to me anyway. So that kind of made me say, all right, you know, and then I had another vet who similar situation said, don't worry about it. Just come on and pick up the prescription. So like I said, little gestures like that will also show and express themselves. And that'll help you kind of choose the vet because like I said, you know, um, your vet is gonna be a key tool and essential piece and part of your arsenal when it comes to becoming a successful breeder. It's hard, it's very hard to, to be a nice big successful breeder and not have a good vet you know or have a collection of good vets you know so just keep that in mind and the other thing too to be mindful of is like also just like you know sometimes you get what you pay for so don't just go based off of price because just because a vet's price is extremely cheap you know doesn't necessarily mean that it's the best you know not all vets practice the same you know so it's one of those things that um, you want to see how long has the vet been practicing for, things like that, because that's going to also help a lot, you know, in making your decision. I don't know about you guys, but at least for me, I'm not going to go to a vet, you know, or, or, or a practice that they have a bunch of, you know, new vets and, you know, they're really not super experienced in what they're doing. You know what I'm saying? So... Yeah, I mean, I had I had one time, one time, this was crazy. I had one time, I had to do an emergency C-section and I called the vet's office because on their site, they say that they do C-sections. So I, so I called them and I said, how much do you guys charge for a C-section? And they said, uh, well, we'll have to get back to you because we've never really like done one before. And I said, okay and i never called them back again you know so stuff like that guys like you know use your head and, and use common sense and just you know like i said you your 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 bank account will thank you later your bank account will thank you later not only your bank account but your dogs you know what i'm saying and ultimately that's really what it's more about than anything you you take care of your dogs and your dogs will take care of you and taking care of your dogs meaning means finding the, the a good the best vet you can for them you know within reason within you know obviously financially within reason and things like that but if you find the best vet your dogs will be taken care of and in turn you'll be taken care of you know what i'm saying you won't have to spend as, as much money on taking care of your dog because the vet's going to make sure it gets it right the first time things like that you know and the other key thing is like you know obviously that's why you're on this channel you're watching and educating yourself make sure that the vet you speak with you know they're knowledgeable you know there's nothing wrong with calling up the receptionist and saying hey i would like to actually speak to the vet you know and there's nothing wrong with talking to these vets and and if the vet if the vet won't allow or won't take the time to speak with you, remember what I said about my criteria? They're instantly kicked off the list, you know? Because if they can't take the time to speak to me, then, you know, um, they, they, they immediately kicked off the list, you know? So they'll never hear from me again. So it's one of those things that, you know, you, you know, you want a vet that's also very well educated. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, um, if it's a new vet, you're gonna wanna be wary, you know? But like I said, though, it's just one of those things that you want the vet to also know what they're talking about. You know, there's nothing wrong with, if there's something wrong with your dog, you know, research it yourself, educate yourself a little bit. And, and I'll say this, right? 
when when you go to the vet and you sound like you know what you're talking about, even if you don't, I'm not saying not to know what you're talking about, but even if you don't know what you're talking about, but you educate yourself just enough and you speak to these vets, they have a newfound respect for you. They're gonna respect you a lot more, you know? And, and hey, even just by you being on this channel, you guys are learning, you know what I'm saying? And um, like I said, with that being said, at the end of the day, you know, I'm, I'm not saying to be a hard ass with these vets. <laughs> I can be to a degree, but there's plenty of vets out there and it's your job though to find the best vet for your dogs. I would say vets, multiple, <laughs> multiple, multiple vets for different services. Like I said, it's your job though. Find them, use some of the things I just told you now for your criteria. And if they meet the bill, then try them out. If not, they get booted and you move on to the next one. So I hope this was helpful guys. You know, let me know, drop a comment down below. You know what I'm saying? I could go into further detail or we could talk about other things as well. You know, other topics. Drop a comment down below. Let me know. I, I hope this was helpful. I just kind of wanted to like, express this to you guys because I've had situations where, like I said, you know, uh, I had, cli you know, uh, clients and people contact me and, and their vet told them to do one thing and it ultimately cost the dog its life. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and that's not what we want. You know, so we want, you know, to go to well experienced vets, you know, that that, you know, want to work with breeders as well as, um, you know, have the dog's best interest at heart. Any any questions, any topics you want to touch on, drop a comment, drop a comment down below. And don't forget to visit breedershacks.com, you know, um, so that you can go ahead and even further save a lot more than having to go to vet for, you know, sm the smaller things. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. <laughs> All right, guys. I'll see you on the next episode of Breeders Hacks.